Hello and welcome to this discussion with Pramod Kapoor about his fascinating new book, 1946, Last War of Independence, Royal Indian Naval Mutiny. If you should find yourself in the northeastern Mumbai suburb of uh, Mulund, there's a chance you'll come across a rusting Nissin hut in a section now known as Cement Company Road. Nissin huts look like uh, metal drums, you know, the kind of thing in which you'd store tar or water, um, cut away in half and laid on their sides. They have corrugated roofs and cement floors. This structure in Mulund is among the very few reminders in Bombay uh, of the momentous bloody events that uh, Pramod Kapoor describes in 1946, last war of independence. This hut and others like it in Mulund camp was the place where hundreds of Indian naval sailors were uh, imprisoned for an insurrection against the British that began in a facility uh, not so far away in South Bombay called the Talwar. The naval mutiny of February 1946 erupted just as independence was approaching and as Pramod Kapoor recounts, soon engulfed the city of Bombay. It drew thousands of civilian supporters into the streets of the city and then spread to other parts of the country. The British, uh, not surprisingly, suppressed the revolt brutally, leaving more than 200 people dead in Bombay alone. Many of you know Pramod Kapoor as the founder and publisher of Roly Books. He has conceptualized and produced scores of award-winning works. In, 1940, uh, in, 19, in 2016, in recognition of his contributions to publishing, he was conferred with the Chevalier de la Légion d'Honneur, France's highest civilian and military award. But alongside his career as a publisher, he's also been a researcher and a writer. In 2016, he wrote Gandhi, an illustrated biography, which has been translated into several languages around the world. Thanks for being with us, Mr. Kapoor. My pleasure. And I, I feel very honored to be um, here on, on your show, which is, I, I believe, is the inaugural show. And uh, so thank you very much for um, well, we're, of we're delighted to have you with us. So, Mr. Kapoor, to begin with, for uh, viewers who are not familiar with the naval mutiny, can you give us a sense of what exactly happened? What were these events that transpired? Well, to, to describe it, I will take you to 1939, when the mobilization or recruitment for the uh, naval ratings began because India was a cheap source of uh, soldiering resources. Um, and they, they had to, the British had to rapidly uh, enroll and recruit uh, for the World War II. Uh, from 3,000 uh, naval uh, ratings to 30,000 within six months. That was a very, very rapid recruitment drive. Uh, for that, they, uh, they uh, issued advertisement, pasted posters all over, you know, attracting, luring the families and the and the and the youngsters who were just about sixteen to twenty four, uh, and saying that you know your life will be made, you'll you'll be able to go around the world and see the world, and and that within two years you'll become officers, all kinds of things that would attract them to uh, the the force. Um, soon after joining they realized that all that was a dream being sold to them, that, that this, was, uh, this was really uh, not the heaven that they were shown, but this is a, a hell where they had come. The living conditions were horrible. Uh, the barrack that, that could take 10 or 15 people, they had 30 people. Where, where the food which was, if, it, if they ran short of food, they would put some water and, and, and stone in the, in, in the dal. And, 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 and there was, a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, uh, racial discrimination, which they just couldn't take. They were asked to do jobs that they were not recruited for. Um, I think the seeds of the mutiny were sowed on in the first two months of their recruitment. They lived with it. They were simmering with all these things. And, and then um, in 1942, when the Quit India movement started, Gandhi gave a call for do or die. This was Gandhi's most aggressive call that he had given in his non-violent 
uh, 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 approach to the freedom movement. There was, there was also, um, uh, uh, soon after that, it was on, the, I remember on the 8th of, uh, uh, 8th of August, 1942, um, there were a whole lot of uh, senior leaders were arrested. Uh, some of the junior ones who were very radical, who were, who could, who could go beyond non-violence, uh, if, 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 if it comes to that, they went underground. Among them was um, Aruna Asaf Ali, uh, Jai Prakash Narayan, Menu Masani, Achyut Patwardhan, uh, and, Pat, and Patnaik, uh, Biju Patnaik. And so a lot of them went un underground. A lot of them were arrested too. Um, this went on in, uh, for next three, three years. In 1945, when these senior leaders were were released, um, Gandhi made a call to, uh, to to these youngsters, the so-called young Turks, and uh, especially directed towards uh, Aruna Asaf Ali, whose uh, properties were confiscated. Who there was a fifty thousand uh, reward on her head. Uh, Gandhi asked, uh, asked her, made an appeal to her that I I understand that you are you are reduced to skeleton now. Come out and and help the freedom movement rather than uh, living in such such condition she came out but she was a she was a radical she i mean the she couldn't she couldn't just uh, bear what was happening to the to the indians and and how they were being treated simultaneously the ina was showing its own valor and bravery it, it, all people were talking about it, including gandhi who actually mentioned that they have actually come in the consciousness of the of the people's mind to to see what they are what they are doing and india was hugely impressed with what netaji was doing at the same time when they were they, they, the british made a, a, a very silly mistake of 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 uh, trying a hindu and a muslim and a sikh at the red red fort this was shah nawaz khan dhillo and sehgal they were being they were tried at in in uh, yes in 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 uh, Red, in redford this this in, in infuriated the the radical um, or aggressive youngsters in the naval forces um, they in any case were being ridiculed that that look from from the society that look here are these brave people who are fighting uh, the the britishers and you are drawing salary from these people and so they, they, they thought that they should do something for their motherland. And that is when they all got together. Well, they were just about 10 in the beginning, which, which I could, then became 300 to 400 of a, a board, board worker, who were called ringleaders. And that then uh, they struck after, after being abused by a foul mouth um, a commander of Talwar, which was a signal school where the best of ratings went because they were the most educated ratings they they were they were used all kinds of foul language like sons of pulleys and sons of bitches and so on i mean all and and uh, the, it, this was a week before they tried their best to reason out and have a have a a, 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 a sort of a commission or like a, an inquiry conducted nothing of that sort happened and then on the morning of the 18th of february they struck work uh, and they went actually they 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 wanted to follow gandhi's non violence methods yet being very firm about it so they they went on a hunger strike and they said no food no work and they start came out and started to shout patriotic slogan in Kalab, Jindabad, down with British, etc. And that's how... So this was all, all happening at um, INS Talwar in South Bombay. That, exactly. That's that's where it's it's where the uh, where the uh, uh, INS Angre, it is a part of INS Angre. It is no more there. It's moved from there since. But uh, it was inside INS Angre. Hmm. And the men who led the mutiny were not officers, but um, sailors. They were uh, they were ratings on the rank and file. Uh, tell us something about them, especially M. S. Khan and uh, B. C. Dutt. You see, they were uh, initially they were just two people, B. C. Dutt and Rishi Dev Puri. Um, both of them on the first of December, nineteen forty-five, when the um, when 
the Navy had decided to open its gates. It was like a PR exercise showing to the to to the gentry in Bombay, the who's who of Bombay were invited to see the pomp and show of the Navy. They were invited on the ship. They were invited on the shore establishments. Now, a night before that, uh, these two people, B.C. Dutt, who, who came from Bardwan in Bengal, and R.D. Puri, who, whose father was from uh, near Lahore. Uh, in fact, he happens to be the uncle of Arun Puri, the, the owners and the, of, of India today, which I gathered much later. They both, the, uh, uh, in the night, wrote said what, they call, what was called by British as seditious uh, slogans. Again, down with British and uh, you know, quit India and Inkalab, Zindabad, etc. They were not caught that night. They uh, so um, uh, the, there was an inquiry, everything, but you know there were there was no trace of who did all this at the night. Next morning, when when people when the when people came in to, to see the the all the pump shows and, and decoration, they saw the it all in shambles. You know that they were there was this kind of and it was the most embarrassing part. They tried their best to rub it off, etc., but they ju they just couldn't do anything. Encouraged by this. They again after three weeks, they they and on sometime towards the um, uh, towards the first week of January or say, or I don't remember the exact date now just now, but around that about three weeks later they they struck again. This time they pasted posters all over Talwar with the same uh, uh, you know slogan. In fact, much worse after that, and unfortunately. Because it they 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 were they 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 were in, they were uh, it was much more audacious to for them to 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 actually paste something rather than write. PC that was caught with a gum bottle in his hands, and that led to his opening of his locker. And then the, when the locker opened, it it was really like a Pandora box. So it had all everything of of uh, of, uh, of the communist literature. Uh, letters written by for, by him to R. D. Puri and to others, and so it just he was immediately arrested. But that was not the end. Then they, be, to to curb all this, a new commander, Commander King, was 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 appointed to 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 uh, to control these people in in Talbar. When he came, uh, again some of these uh, ratings got together, and in the night. They punctured his 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 uh, flat flattened his tire on the black ca uh, car that he had. They wrote all kinds of slogans. He got so infuriated next uh, next morning when he saw this that he marched into their barracks while they were lying on their cots and smoking and so on. With and so he that is when he used these kind of foul language, and that is how the all the mutiny began. Now there were there were several people. Uh, there were. The mutiny may have been started by B.C. Dutt and uh, and and R.D. Puri, but it uh, they were they were outsiders as well. There was Kusum and P.N. Nair who were firm, who were formerly from the uh, from the Navy, uh, not necessarily in the fighting force, but uh, uh, Kusum was in the uh, was in the administrative job. They were they they had a flat in in Mumbai in Bombay, say Bombay then. Uh, on uh, Marine Drive, uh, it was called Rivera. The building was called Rivera, flat number two. That's where they, they started to invite people to address these ratings. Aruna Asafali was one of them. She encouraged them. Then the uh, IPTA people, Indian uh, People's Theatre Association people like Kwaza Ahmed of Bath, uh, Prithi Raj Kapoor was there on the 20th of February. Uh, before that, they were addressing these people and 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 they were encouraging them to to revolt. And these boys, when the the, the number sold to over to 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 went to about fifty or sixty, they thought they are going to snatch the Royal Indian Navy from the Britishers and present them as Indian Navy to Bharat Mata. That this way, I mean, they were young, innocent, you know. And and this is what they they plan to do. Uh, there was uh, once the mutiny started, the British asked them that look, uh, you have to uh, you uh, we can't talk to four hundred or five thousand people. You have to have a uh, have a committee. So there was a committee form which was called uh, Naval Central Strike Committee um, uh, (NCSC), where um, they had um, M.S. Khan, 
who later migrated to to Pakistan, who was taken as the president. Uh, the, the second in command was Madan Singh, who was a, a Mona Sikh for the Kutch Sadar. Um, the there were pe people like uh, B.C. Dutt by then was in jail, so he wasn't part of this. But there were several others uh, uh, like that, and and a committee was formed, and they made their demand known to um, uh, to to the Britishers, and that's how the uh, uh, you know I think the Britishers were were talking to the politicians. They were also planning uh, an, an assault. Uh, they were also talking to them. You know, just like the the the, the, the clever administrative tactics. They all in, uh, you know em employed all that, and that is what happened in the first few days of the of the mutiny. But much it became much more violent later, of course. And the city of Bombay reacted. Um, they were bringing uh, you right how movingly they brought food to uh, the Gateway of India and the ships. Uh, the boats were coming because the British were trying to starve the sailors on the ships. That's right. You know, we the on the on the third day of the of the mutiny, they, that was the most violent day uh, between uh, the ratings and the and the and the British forces. The um, the British tried to stop water, food, everything going into Castle Barracks, which is also which is now the INS Angre, and. They, they wanted to starve them, not allow anyone to go in or not allow anyone from in to come out. That's when um, the first firing definitely was done by the British from outside. Uh, it may have been, it may have been, uh, you know, sparked by something they may have done from inside, but there was no firing from inside. That battle, that battle in Castle Barrack went on for five hours. I think that was the introduction of violence in, in otherwise a peaceful, um, aggressive, but peaceful demonstration of their rights. And when that happened, uh, it just spread like wildfire in, in Bombay. Uh, there, were, uh, there were people who knew that they, they, were, they are being starved. So these all the Irani restaurants, you know, these people who had restaurants all around Kolaba would make pa packets of food and, and offer it to them where they even, ship, you know, throw them above the, the high walls so that they can they can get it. If there were ships, which were, uh, as I don't know if I, if I mentioned this, that if within 24 hours, something like 20,000 sailors, uh, 78 ships and 21 shore establishments all around um, Bombay and Karachi, uh, went on one strike. Now they wouldn't allow; they will not allow these uh, boys to come from the ship and gather food. So these the, these owners of the restaurants and and even common people who were, who lived around that area would actually, you know, try and and send the food to them. And in the process, there was always a <coughs> fight and so on. But this is this is how they tried to help. And then on the fourth day. When this was then they were stopped from doing that. Um, the the Fokrin, the chief of the Navy in India, um, Admiral Godfrey, he he made a um, on on All India Radio he make an, made an announcement that if you the, we we want nothing short of um, surrender, unconditional surrender, and gave a time that by three o'clock or whatever you have to surrender. Of course, they didn't surrender that day. There was still, uh, uh, you know, the discussion going on, and the, he even threatened that we will destroy the navy which we have built with a lot of care and love. We we won't mind destroying, but we cannot take this kind of indiscipline. Yeah. They ordered a big, uh, the big, the second biggest warship they had, uh, HMIS Glasgow, which was berthed in Trincomalee, to rapidly sail towards Bombay. They they had the low. Uh, uh, flights of what they call mosquitoes of the uh, Indian Air Force, and they flew low over uh, the gateway of India. Now, when that happened, the the these boys were always in 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 in, uh, in communication with all the ships. The ships that were on the on the in, in nearest to the Bombay uh, shore, they uh, trained their guns on yacht club on. Um, uh, on Gateway of India and Dockyard and said, one harm to any of us, we'll blow these buildings. Of course, it was threat from both sides. I don't think it, they would have carried the threat because that would have meant 
uh, a lot of Indian civilians would have been killed also. But that is how it came to. It's really literally eyeball to eyeball. And and it, it was perhaps things could have gone wrong. Who knows? But for half an hour, it was the most tense moment. And and uh, that is how it panned out to be. And so it and was. Then, it there was, were also street battles, right? As you right. Well, I was coming to that on the fourth day. Then uh, on the fourth day, the, when when uh, communists gave us gave a gave a call for a total strike, which was opposed by uh, Congress and and uh, and Muslim League, but uh, communists were controlling the mill workers, the students, the transport workers. So something like 300,000, 3 lakh people, Bombay people, some of them non-communists too, who were uh, from their heart supporting the, 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 the young ratings. They all came on the streets and peacefully. They were, of course, there were some lumpen elements who, who couldn't control themselves and they, they, uh, the target of their, their anger was all these European shop, Lawrence and Mayo, Imperial Bank, etc., etc. They were looted. There's no doubt about that. But the, the Britishers opened fire, opened fire incessantly. It, it's like 50 places they, they, in, in one day, 50 places they were fired. And the official figure of casualty is over 400. Official is 400. And 1,500 injured. There are, there are descriptions of all kinds of, uh, you know, something that, that really shakes your, you know, your conscience and your heart. The kind of uh, stories that you, you heard from the, or, or I read from the, you know, from the hospitals. They were, they were, they, they fired uh, without hesitation on, on women, on children. So they were massive. They were all of Bombay. I mean, all of, uh, all of, uh, Bombay that supported them came out on the street to 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 have to in, in solidarity with these uh, naval ratings. You write that neither the Congress nor the Muslim League were especially keen on supporting the ratings. What was happening here? Well, you see, they, uh, uh, it's very difficult to uh, analyze things in perspective seventy or five years later. But I would say that there were there were quite a few reasons. One. That um, they, the uh, the communist, I mean, sorry, the, the the Muslim League and Congress should have stepped in earlier. They they were they were making they were making statement, but till the fourth day when the uh, all this firing started, they knew that the public support was with the ratings. So they would not say they would openly say anything. They would they would say you calm down, but yet at the same time saying yes, we must fight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When the firing started. The, the they started on on uh, although they were having parleys they were having uh, meetings with with the authorities uh, of the uh, 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 British authorities etc <coughs> when the when the firing started they I think perhaps it was uh, it was always a pressure from Gandhiji because he would never compromise with non-violence. And so he, he uh, and, and Sadar Patel was his emissary, really, his, his, his representative in Bombay. Uh, he had several meetings with the, uh, with the uh, committee members, <coughs> explained to them that, look, uh, I think it's, uh, it's time to, that you should stop all this, you should do surrender. And they couldn't have surrendered. They had gone far too ahead. And that is where I feel that the... Uh, but politicians, the political leaders did not help these people for two, three reasons. One, they, they were talking and they knew the, 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 to what extent they have reached in their, uh, in their discussions with um, negotiating uh, independence for India. They, they knew that the independence was imminent and they just did not want to um, rock the boat, let's say. So therefore, they would never, in, that was one reason. Second reason was that, you know, there is always um, uh, romance in, in violence, to, so sorry to say. But, I mean, you, you are a newsman yourself. You know that, look, uh, when, when, when violence takes, takes place, that's the, the, that's the breaking news. That's the lead. When a peaceful thing happens, uh, that, that is at the last as a good feel-good story, you know. So, I mean, this, they, they knew the Congress and the, and, the, uh, and the Muslim League knew 
that uh, that it will be like giving the uh, giving all the credit to them on a platter. I mean, this was not the only reason, but this was also one of the reasons that they did not want to share the credit with these youngsters. For 30, 40 years, these, these um, leaders had risked their lives. They had done so much for the mother India. They were on the street. There was salt satyagraha. There was uh, you know, non-cooperation. So many things they, they did on the street. They couldn't have just given them on a platter and say, because no one then the, it was really sharing the reason for independence with these youngsters. And it was getting to, an, to a point where the um, Air Force has joined the this fight. They had 1,500 of them had actually marched and they were, they were going to announce a mutiny. I mean, it was a, I mean, joining the mutiny. Uh, they were in discussion with army. So if all the three forces had combined, it would have been a, a, a different thing. It could have been a disaster. The, it was, could have been a very violent uh, uh, movement, but all this probably the, the political de- leaders did not want. And mm-hmm. But my complaint is something else. My complaint is that's fine. They were acting more responsibly and, and they, they, but my, my, my problem is that when India got independence, none of these, these boys were not only not take, uh, were pardoned, but they were uh, they were not even taken into the service or any kind of service. Whenever they they uh, they wrote to the government, they would get a, a two-line cyclostyle letter saying the uh, the government has uh, taken a policy decision that those who were discharged will not be taken into the forces, and those who were discharged with disgrace will not be taken into the civil services as well. Now, that is not understandable. I do not know why. I mean, there are, of course, there will be conjectures. But anyway, over to you. <laughs> what um, mark did this surprising leave on Indian life? Uh, you begin your book by talking about how uh, Utpal, that uh, in 1965, many um, couple of decades after this, uh, did a play called Kalol. And in as recently as 2017, uh, the artist uh, Viman Sundaram revisited this event in his exhibition, meanings of a failed action. How did it live on and what what was the immediate effect it had and how has it played out since then? You see, there's no doubt that the Congress did not want it to be known. Congress or even Muslim League did not want this this particular mutiny to be known. So it was very conveniently really edited out. Let me give you an example. You know, so many examples I came across but let me give you one example. There was one newspaper, Free Press Journal, which was very brave. Sadanan, the owner editor of the time, who, who's, who's now a legend, uh, you know, whose name is uh, everyone in the media knows about him, that how courageous he was. He was the only man who actually him and, and Bombay Chronicle and and few other regional newspaper. But Free Press, I say because I I consulted it the most. Now. Every day they would be, you know, he would write very openly against, uh, you know, supporting the, the, the naval mutiny. Now, when I started my research, for me, the best source for the nationalistic side of the story was Free Press Journal. So I started to look for Free Press Journal from February 19, because 18 it had started. So obviously the first reporting will be on 19 until 27 or 26th of February. Nowhere, nowhere could I find find Nehru Memorial, which house which has every newspaper from 100, 100 years did not have those copies. I I contacted the relatives, uh, or the present person who owns um, uh, Free Press Journal. He said, "Fine, it's all yours. See, I mean, if you're writing an important book like this, where we had uh, so much participation, yes." I went there. I could not find those seven seven days. Nowhere in India I could find those seven days. They were just missing. Where do I find it? I find it in National Maritime Museum in Greenwich in London. If if I hadn't found them at, by chance, I would have my whole research about the nationalistic side of the story would have been half complete. So the Congress or the 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 uh, the, the rulers at the time. They did not want this to come out. There must have been some guilt or something that they felt. Uh, if not the guilt, then they felt that the people will not take kindly. So nothing came out. 
not until and it, it wasn't just nehru it was also vallabhbhai patel was, no also in it was much worse in in pakistan hmm. where jena said uh, you know uh, he he didn't take he exactly the same he didn't take anyone he didn't just did not take anyone i don't know uh, i don't didn't have much access to the archives there so i won't know what the situation is but here all of congress this was coming from the top even even jawaharlal nehru who was in the beginning talking in in, in favor of these uh, ratings actually following the diktat of the of the uh, of the party or discipline of the party actually started to was talking the same language after all he had become the prime minister and so this was the, the, he also support uh, did not support uh, late nothing came, um, was until 1965 or there may have been some there were some in 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 uh, in ferozpur near agra etc some of the ratings would meet and it was like a like a club coming together and you know hugging each other and crying and see what we did and what we lost that other than that there was no recognition so here was utpal dat i mean there was also sahir ludhanvi who wrote brilliant poetry you know which is later used in films there was josh maliha badi who wrote there was chitto prasad who's who's painting you see on the cover uh, you know he was a he was a big radical he lived in bombay all his life a lot of our friends uh, elderly friends remember very fondly remember him as a young chitto prasad they you know all these people were were made to be forgotten in 65 kal utpal that who was a staunch communist decided to stage a play and he was very good at what he did you know we all know that uh, it was it was a it was a play that those people who are in their 80s now remember that how he had created a set where uh, a ship was floating you know a khyber he named a, a ship uh, um, hms khyber he himself became a, a sort of villain of a british uh, officer that it was floating uh, it it was hugely popular within two days uh, you know people were thronging people were going, you know there was this was at a place called beaden street minerva theater where uh, this was being staged they the congress did not want this to happen but they had no courage to actually ban it because it was hugely popular so they they sent their youth congress uh, whatever they are called uh, uh, to to gherao the 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 minerva theater made sure nobody gets in at that time the communists actually had their own young turks their own own young uh, uh, team to come and and counter them i mean the, 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 there was no major um, blood bath or anything but the, the play went on for, for in in fact it uh, there is some way i read that it was something like 500 um you know days the play went on uninterrupted then in 1966 when they couldn't do it on some pretext or the other utpal that was was arrested he was arrested and put behind bars and that's when it it got disrupted and that's when it it didn't happen for some time of course when he when he came out there was a big tamasha this whole thing set was made on hugli river and and it was something quite big so to congress went to that extent to actually suppress this this mutiny and and therefore you do not find mention of this anywhere how did you get interested in these events and telling the story mr kapoor well you know it was it was purely by chance i was i was researching my book on the uh, uh, the my book earlier book the um, illustrated biography of atma gandhi and uh, and i wasn't going to be satisfied with just putting very rare and 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 good pictures i i thought i must and i didn't know i must say i didn't know much about i mean i knew gandhi as much as anyone else knew and read you know reverence by the family the, uh, in the in the school and college etc i, I Uh, uh, one of the uh, one of my friend uh, who's who's uh, sadly no more professor mushirul hasan who was also our our author i i asked him i said look can you help me either you write the book i'll do a, he said no you write the book but i'll tell you first before you write the book read 100 volumes of collected works of mahatma gandhi so i thought well, what a good idea i'll do it i thought you know it's just a child's play you know 500 i mean 100 volume but it turned out to be 60000 pages so i speed read everything i speed read it for it's about 7 8 months i did nothing except reading 
um, uh, collected works of Mahatma Gandhi and took out and made 12 volume of selected works by Pramod Kapoor of this thing, which I, which I've, I, because whatever interested me, you know, I put it in that selected, selected works. When I came to a volume 79, 80, I, I saw that there was mention of, uh, of this mutiny. There was, there was a letter exchange between Sardar Patel and Gandhi Ji, where Sardar Patel says that I have asked Jawahar, that be Jawaharlal Nehru, not to come to Bombay because his arrival will add fuel to the fire. Yet he is coming. He said he cannot stop himself. Let him come. You know, it was uh, something that Sardar Patel was not very happy and he was complaining to, to Gandhi Ji. I somehow felt that this was not going to fit into the, the biography of Gandhi Ji. So I did not include it. Perhaps it was a bit of a guilt or, or reading further on this, I, I, I realized it was a huge big thing that there were 400 people killed in three days. There were uh, you know, guns pointing towards each other. This could have, there were, this was a, a wonderful case of secularism. You know, the, how uh, forces were so secular and the, and the politicians were so divided between Hindu and Muslim. There was much more to learn. And more I read, more I got sucked into it. Everything that I was reading sounded like breaking stories, you know, because it was first time for me. And that got me into it. I read further and I just couldn't stop. Even when I started to write the book, I, I, I always had this in me that I, perhaps I have not done, done enough. And, and now that the book is out, I'm finding out more. People are responding after reading the book saying, you know, my father was in the Indian post in, in Calcutta. And he said he was only 20 at that time. Uh, my grandfather, uh, he was only 20 at the time. We all, they all went on strike for one day. Now, I couldn't find mention that how each center had actually gone on strike and the government offices had actually shut down. And those are things I didn't have preview. So, you know, but that is what happens when you write recent history. You will always come with, you know, come up with people who tell you new stories. You know. That's what happened. Mr. Kapoor, what are the lessons you think contemporary India can learn from uh, the naval mutiny of 1946? Why is it still relevant? Well, first, first thing I'll say that look, nothing should be suppressed. You know, I know it's a, it's easy said, said than done. Um, I've, I'm not, you know, into it, administrator or 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 governing millions of people. Perhaps it's a, it's it's something that they need to do. But the the power of something that you suppress once it comes comes up is much more than what than that at the time when you're suppressing it. You know. The, the 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 result of that later is much more violent so i think we should allow things to 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 uh, to be recorded um but you know everywhere in the world it is the it is the ruler that dictates what will be allowed what will not be allowed at that time congress was ruling they did not want it to be uh, to to be uh, you know to be uh, recorded in the, as a part of the freedom movement now, now we have BJP. If it is, if if it does not help the the saffron thinking, they will not allow it. You know, but what I am saying is for it for something to come later, and uh, you know, it's, the, the 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 this is the biggest thing that we should we should allow things to uh, you know what people have uh, expressed, and if it is right, uh, yeah. After all, it was for the freedom movement. It was not a mutiny for food. It was a mutiny to attain freedom for the country. So therefore, it should have been allowed to be recorded. And so we should not really suppress any such movement. That is my biggest take from, from this. Right. Thank you, Mr. Kapoor, for uh, writing the book and for bringing to uh, memory again this fascinating, uh, complex uh, idea of the freedom struggle uh, the, um, the, and in the 75th year of uh, independence in which People from so many different classes and so many different communities participated. Uh, and you, you really sort of demonstrate how broad-based and inclusive this, uh, this battle for our freedom was. So thank you so much for being with us. Well, my, you know, my, lastly, I would say that my work will be, will be successful if there are more books come out on the subject. Areas that I have not been able to, to cover or, or which was not known to me, if all that comes out. I think, uh, and also if this, 
if this injustice done to these ratings, if this is corrected, if 18th of February is also celebrated, if not like 15th August or 26th January, but something uh, that it should be celebrated every year, then I know that I've done a job well done. You know. Thank and you. perhaps uh, you will even inspire some residents of Bombay and the surrounding regions to go to Mulund and look for Mulund camp where yes. they were imprisoned after this. No, but there is HMIS Akbar, it used to be called. It's called something else now. But that, that still exists and there's a plaque that exists. That what happened that day? It's one of those rare things, you know. You have mm -hmm. the mutiny memorial, which, is, which could have been much better. But I believe the Indian Navy is now doing a lot of things to, to actually propagate what had happened because I, probably they have the mandate from the from the government to do it. You know, the earlier governments had not given them mandate, you know. But anyway, that is not my, my, my but it was in the purview of my, my book. I would say that, yes, Indian Navy is doing a lot now and you'll see the result in next one year. We look forward to that. Thank you Thank so much, you. Mr. Kapoor, Thank for being you. with us. Thank you once again.